doing a lot of things right now. All right, YouTube is on. Facebook one, Facebook two. Hey, there we go. Gee, I gotta look up. I gotta put my meatballs up there. Here, everybody. It's Thursday afternoon at some random time. <laughs> Gio and I are back. And there's a couple of things I wanna talk about today. Uh, the title of this live is Acceptance is Not um, Giving Up, because I've heard that several times or gotten some emails about that. So um, look at, you're supposed to be looking up here. There you go. Everybody can see your pretty face. And I want to share with you an opportunity to work more closely together through our online dog training course specifically dealing with aggression and it's called 60 days to your dream dog ditch the aggression not your dog now if you were on our free webinar on tuesday night um, i did a whole uh, a deeper dive into some of these concepts that are in the course and then of course uh opened it up for people to jump in and buy the course and if you were on that webinar i don't know what is holding you up there is absolutely nothing to lose um, by signing up and joining because you get you get a 30 day money back guarantee. Okay, not that I think that you're ever going to need that, um, but I'm jumping ahead of myself. So let's talk about this concept where people feel like if you accept your dog for who they are, all the good, all the bad, all the pretty, all the ugly, that you feel like you're giving up on your dog. I'm not sure where that comes from, um, but it that is absolutely not the purpose of accepting your dog. The purpose of accepting your dog is to open up possibilities. Um, and I'm going to give you an example of one of my children. And I don't know if they're on live with me or not, but we'll find out. <laughs> um so my daughter, Rachel, is a highly sensitive person. Actually, all my daughters are highly sensitive people. We all did the test recently, and they all scored very close to in the high teens, 18, 16, somewhere in there. Anyway, when Rachel was growing up at a young child, uh, there was no such thing as highly sensitive people. I don't know what the heck was going on. But here's an example. I pick her up from school or daycare or maybe even a friend's house or something. And then I'm like, great, we're in the car, we're gonna go do some errands. And maybe I'd do some grocery shopping or maybe I'd go to Walmart or Lord knows where I would go. And every stop, every trip, everything that we did, Rachel's temperament or not her temperament, her attitude would just tank, right? We'd get lots of crying, we'd get lots of temper tantrums and if you guys are parents out there, you know what it's like. <laughs> you feel like this is like the child is doing this to you, right? When really it really has nothing to do with you and it has everything to do with the personality, personality of the child, but nonetheless. And so <clears throat> I read this book and I was taking parenting classes and the name of the book escapes me. Uh, it's right on the tip of my tongue, but the author is Mary Sheedy Kurchenko. Why can I remember that three-part name, but I cannot remember the name of the book? I don't know. But anyway, I read this book that explained personalities and temperament, and I realized that Rachel was very introverted, meaning she could be out in public and be with people, but it drains her battery, and she needs alone time to recoup. She's also fairly sensitive to like commotion and large crowds and lights and too many sounds and too much sensory overload is it can be challenging. And so when I realized that this was a temperament issue, that this was who she is, it was like bing, 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 light bulbs, light bulbs, light bulbs. Oh, okay. So it has nothing to do with me. She's not trying to sabotage my grocery shopping or my trips to, I'm just saying Walmart because it's a highly, uh, it, it's very, it's very easy to get overwhelmed in Walmart. So I'm saying that, but anyway, um, 
And so once I realized that, then I could make a change in my behavior. And when I, um, when I did things, Hey Liv, shh, don't tell Rachel I'm talking about her. Um, I would say, okay. So I would pick her up from school and we would go home and, and I would put my shopping needs aside for the time being. And we would have her decompress, read a book, watch a movie, color, have a snack, whatever she needed to do. And, or it would be, okay, I'm going to bring her home. But then, you know, when uh, the kid's father gets home, I'll go out and do the errands that I need to do. Or I would do the errands with her early in the morning when she's still fresh and recovered from the day before and has more energy and stamina to deal with Walmart grocery shopping or whatever. So the point is, is that when, so I'm relating this to, to dogs. So when I accepted her for her personality traits, for her temperament, it was like blow up my brain and say, Oh, all right. So here's all the things I can do. Here's the time frame I can do them. And I just needed to shift some things around. So it's the same thing, you guys, with your dogs. If you've got aggression issues, over arousal issues, whatever it is, when you can really accept your dog for who they are, you're going to open up a lot of other possibilities for them and for you. But if you stay stuck trying to change them, trying to, I don't know if I want to say fix them or not, but trying to continue to socialize here's a here's another myth oh if i i my dog is um barking and yelling at strangers i need to get him around more people so you go off and you socialize socialize the dog more nah, that's more likely going to make it worse not better um or oh i need to train more train more train more or i need a shock collar a prong collar whatever it is i shouldn't have opened up that that <laughs> pandora's box but no the first step in solving your dog's aggressive issues is to accept them for who they are. It's easier said than done, but when you do that, it opens up possibilities for what you can do, what your dog can do, what you can do together, the timing of those things. So just like all of us are more tired at the end of the day, We've been up, we've been out thinking, we've been with people, we've been working, we've been shopping, whatever it is we've been doing. And boy, by the end of the day, that is not the time that I'm going to um, do some very important writing. It's not the time that I want to do a big budget or reconcile my checkbook or something like that, right? I need to do those when I'm fresh at the top of the day. And some of you, particularly if you have fearful, worried, nervous, anxious dogs, the beginning of the day is a much better time for them because at the end of the day, to, depending on their level of fear, it's like they've been in a haunted house all day, literally, depending on their level of fear, right? Like, oh my God, what was that? What was that? What was that? And by the end of the day, they're just fried and you're going to see more aggression, more lashing out at the end of the day than you do at the beginning of the day. Okay. Okay. So a quick little thing on, um, on the acceptance is not giving up. Now, if you're watching this on the replay, be sure you give me a hashtag replay. If you saw the webinar, just say webinar. If you didn't see the webinar, don't say anything. They'll know that you didn't see it. But I'm going to give you some links so that you can check out what we did on Tuesday. So the webinar was recorded. Yay for that. And I'm going to drop that link in. It's called the lobby page for viewing the webinar replay. It's here. And it's not going to be available. It's, it's only going to be available until noon on Saturday. So I would suggest if you think that this is something you're interested in, then I would get, I would set aside some time. Sorry, I'm trying to cut and paste in all the places while I'm doing this. 
So lobby page for viewing the webinar replay. I am posting that in all of the places. That will be the free webinar that we did Tuesday night. Best place to see it is there. You can, you can skip it, you can do whatever you want to do, but we go in more deeper into some of these topics. And if you have been looking for an opportunity to work together, then now is the time to act on that as well. If you guys saw the webinar on Tuesday, it was awesome. You guys had great comments back and forth. You were all there. You all showed up for some really intense reasons that have to do with dog aggression, which of course I knew because that was the topic of the course, but uh, topic of the webinar. But listen, your dog knows what's happening. They. I'd like to say that they know the science, they understand the science, and it's really up to us to, to catch up with that. So check out the, the lobby page. Uh, check out the course that we're offering. It's only available until Saturday at noon, and then we close the doors and you can't get in until sometime next year. I'm not sure what's holding you all up. This is an awesome course. Not only do you get the course, I'm just going to see if I could share my screen. Is that possible on Facebook? Well, I'm going to do that another day. Maybe I'll do that on Saturday. Um, you get a course, right? So you log in. There's eight modules. They are released one week at a time so that you're not overwhelmed. They're not, it's not the whole thing isn't open right away. It's one at a time. So you've got a whole week to do that module. They're very short and consistent. There's nothing happening over the Christmas and New Year's holiday, so you get a break. You can keep reviewing, you can do whatever. But not only do you get that course, you get six coaching, group coaching calls with myself and with Amy. That's meaning on Zoom, you get a link, we all log in at the same time. We, we have a supplemental teaching and training that we'll do on those calls with you guys. And we'll talk about the modules, if you've gone over them, if you've got questions about them. We will answer your specific questions. How do I do blah, blah, blah? Why is my dog doing such and such, right? So not only, hey, Carmen, um, not only do you, like, I can't do that here. This is, I need so much more information to really to be able to answer your questions effectively. But in the course and in those group coaching calls, that's where the magic, that's where you get to do that. We send videos back and forth. There's also, so not only do you get six group coaching calls, we also get a bonus call with Sue Sternberg, who is amazing. She is an international author and presenter, and she is the queen of reading dog body language. So you'll get to submit your dog's videos to me, and I give them to her, and we will review them with her on that call. That's an amazing call. It's one of my favorite parts. Um, of this whole process is working with directly with Sue. Um, so you get those calls, you get the course, you get the thing with Sue. We, hang on, there's bonuses such as we send you this book. As soon as you purchase the course, we'll send you the book. You get our muzzle desensitizing course. You get our uh, mini seminar on dog body language, which is awesome. And you also get your private Facebook page. So what that means is so the magic, there's so much magic in this course. The magic happens in those Zoom calls with Amy and I and all of you. All of you are struggling with aggression of some type. So you get to hear everybody's wins, everybody's successes, everybody's setbacks, what they tried and did or didn't work. It's amazing group community support that you don't get when I'm just sitting on your couch, which is what I love about this online course. That's different, right? I mean, who thinks that you could do dog training online? But you can. Okay, so six group coaching calls, the book, the muzzle course, the the um, mini seminar on dog body language, a bonus call with Sue Sternberg, international speaker and presenter, queen of dog body language. She reviews your videos as well. And the magic also happens in this private Facebook group where – you can post videos of your training sessions, and I encourage you to do that. You can post videos of your weird dog behavior. What does this mean? Why is he doing this? And we are there to answer your questions. We're there every day to answer your questions. Well, five days a week. We take two days off. 
to answer your specific questions about your specific dog's aggressive behavior. That's, in my mind, that's awesome because that's what you're really all looking for. And that's what you're continue to try to ask me on, on the Facebook pages that you're on with me, which is great. And I do whatever I can and I ask you some questions back, but this is the place we take that deep dive. It's, um, it's awesome. So look at that lobby page. I posted it in the comments. Uh, give me a hashtag replay if you watch this on the replay. I know I missed sort of the lunch hour for those of you that are working, but I just wanted to get on and not think about what time would be a better time. If you have questions, you know how to reach us. We are here to help and answer anything that we can. Um, and so that's it for today. Be well, you guys. Remember, acceptance is not giving up on your dog. Acceptance is all about being able to accept your dog and see the possibilities. And when you are in denial or you're wishing for something that you don't have, it's very hard to honor the dog you have and see their possibilities. And there's a lot. There's more than you think. All right, you guys. I'm going to look for you all to be in the course. And I will see you later. Have a great Thursday. Great Thursday and all the things.